Good morning, y'all. This is where I slept last night, in the trunk of my car. Pretty comfortable, if I do say so myself. Got a four inch insulator, down sleeping bag. I can lay flat in there. This is my go-to sleeping thing when I'm out traveling, going fishing up north, going fishing down south. So I don't have to rent a hotel for a hundred bucks or pay 50 bucks to stay at a campground sometimes. Pull off to the side of the road, sleep in my car. So I can do a good amount of editing in here too. All I do is raise up the passenger seat. I've got a little table that I can put my laptop on. But the main thing is for sleeping. So with my sleeping bag, insulator, and my pillow, I get this all set up before I leave my house. And sometimes if I'm not on these like dirt roads, these back roads where I can just pull off and sleep easy, a lot of times I'm in the city. Like sometimes I'll be in Monterey or sometimes in San Francisco. And if I want to sleep, you got to find a little cutty spot that's not suspicious. So what I do is I go into a residential area where it doesn't have many street lights. A lot of trees are good. And I, I like to creep on in there when it's kind of late, like 11, 1130. All the lights are out in the houses. And then I pull up into a spot, turn off my lights, make sure nobody saw me, make sure all the interior lights are off, climb on back. I put up a little blanket right here. And come on, man, I'm in a freaking Toyota Highlander. Nobody's going to suspect that I'm sleeping in here. So it looks just like regular old passenger car, but I'm having the best night's sleep of my life in this little thing. So that's my tips. If you want to go sleeping in your car, save some money on hotel, uh, campgrounds, you got a little SUV, do it like that. Residential areas, that's the go-to when you're out here trying to do it like this. Forget the Walmart parking lots, too many lights, security guards roam those things. Residential areas, I've never had a problem. And I've slept in my car 20, 30 times, never had any encounters. So yeah, that's enough talking about my sleeping. I got this spot. You remember the spot with the ladders? It was a video from the past. The ladder spot, baby. I'm back here going down, gonna give a fish at the ladder spot. This is how it starts. A little poison oak and a rope. Maybe I should call it the ropes and ladder spot. Did I mention poison oak? Yeah, it's a little bit overgrown since the last time I've been here. This is two ladders down, and we got four more to go. To the person who built this, I'm sorry I found your spot, your secret spot. And only a fisherman would make a path like this with four aluminum ladders down a steep cliff. I'm with you, man. And just know, your secret's safe with me. I'd never let anybody know where this spot is. Now that we made it to the spot, we're going to move on to a little bit more technical aspect of fishing. Now, I know I've answered this many times, but I still consistently get asked how to fish for beginners. So today I'm going to show you exactly what you need to go rock fishing, fishing with bait. The easiest way anybody can get started, as long as you know how to cast, tie some knots, you can catch some rockfish. This is what I use. After looking at the swell, the current, and the wind, I decided on a three ounce weight today. Also going to need a snap swivel to attach the weight to. Then you're going to need two hooks. I recommend anything between a 2 aught and a 5 aught. Could be a bait holder, it could be octopus. When you're rock fishing, there are tons of snags, hence the name rock fishing. So on my spool, I've got 65 pound braid. I'd recommend anything 50 pound and up. Anything less than that, you'll get snagged. And when you try to free it, it'll just snap. But 65 pound, you can move a rock. You can cut through kelp. So 65 pound is good. For leader, I'd like this to break first before my main line. So this is 50 pound fluorocarbon. Now whether I'm a boat or fishing from rocks, I tie my leaders the same way. Palomar knot from the braid to the swivel. Double up that line, twist it over, put it through just like a regular old knot. Make sure those lines are equal. Then pull it through, give it a little wet, a little spit. Then you can just pull one line or both, pull that down. There's your palomar knot. This is a super strong knot for attaching anything to braid. Now the reason why I attach a swivel to my braid is because if I want to change out leaders, I can do that easily with the perfection loop. So I take the tag end in my right hand, double it over once, double it over in front, take the tag end, put it through the middle, and then I pull one of the loops through the back loop. Don't even need any spit. 
And there's my perfection loop. I can tie, I can attach that straight to the snap swivel. Now about a foot down from the perfection loop, you wanna make a big twist around your fingers and do four twists. Make sure that loop is big enough so a hook will fit through. One, two, three, four. Put your fingers through it, pull that line on the bottom through the top, cinch it down, make sure everything stays tight. Give it a little spit, pull it tight. There's one dropper loop. You're gonna do two of these. Down another foot, do the same thing. Now with my snap swivel, right at the bottom of my leader, I'm gonna do a clinch knot. So put it through the eye, wrap it around four times. One, two, three, and four. And it's not the improved clinch knot, no need for that. You put it straight back through the hook on the bottom. With the tag end, pull it up with your teeth, and then cinch it down. That's not going anywhere, that's what you're attaching the three ounce weight to. Now with the weight on the bottom, you want your hook tip up, go through the eye with that dropper loop through the eyes of the hook, pull it through and thread it over the hook. Now your hook is ready to fish. Now we got two hooks, 50 pound floral, three ounce weight, a top hook. I'm gonna thread on a piece of squid. I like it big and chunky, because I'm trying to catch a big fish today. So that's going on my four out octopus hook. You just thread it on back and forth, back and forth. Squid is really tough, so it's not very likely to come off the hook. Before you cast, make sure your line is not wrapped around the tip of your rod. Reel up about a half foot to the swivel. Get your reel line right up there close. Make sure your drag is set tight. Open the bail and cast out to the deepest spot it looks like. Wherever it's dark and the waves aren't breaking. Not even gonna cast out far, but right between that channel, it looks very deep to me. Hold the line until you feel it hit bottom. That way you'll get an idea of how deep it is. Now reel it in so you get a little tiny bend in your rod. That way you're, you're, you're feeling the fish, you're right on it, and then tighten down your drag. I suggest holding your rod if you're rock fishing because if you get a fish, you wanna set the hook and pull him straight up towards you. You don't want him to have any chance to swim back down to a rock. Well, my line's been sitting out there for about eight minutes, haven't gotten any bites. So when I'm ready to reel in, gotta make sure my drag is locked down. And then I wanna do a fast retrieve, kinda like a crab snaring. You wanna lift that thing up quick, reel in, so you don't get snagged. Uh oh, if you do get snagged, it's okay, be patient. Give it a few pops. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of times you'll just get snagged and you have to break off even with this heavy line, so. Bring a lot of tackle, because you might lose some stuff. Let's give this another try from a little bit farther out. Cast to a deeper little zone. See how this works. Now I'm changing it up just a little bit now. I've only got one hook, one piece of bait. I'm just gonna pop it into every little pocket around here. Come on, man. I can get one. I believe in myself. Ah! Gotta make sure I don't fall backwards into this water. Come on, fishy, fishy, fishy. Man, it's slow out here, so I'm trying something different. I popped one of these limpets off the rocks. We'll see. Come on, man. You know what? I got snagged again. I've tried limpets, I've tried squid, I've tried swim baits, now I'm trying mussels. Throwing everything I can at these fish. Man, I almost think that these fish can sense the desperation in my hand through the line. So I'm gonna put my rod down. It works like this though, I promise, most of the time. Oh my God, dude. Seriously? All right, look, as frustrating it is for you that I haven't caught any fish on this video, imagine how frustrating it is for me being out here for six hours and not a bite. Hey y'all, I think I got a fish or something heavy. What is this, a crab or something? Definitely some weight on there. Oh my God, are you serious? Got a damn slug, damn gumboot, or whatever you call this thing. Are you kidding me? Seriously? What are the chances? I can't catch a damn fish, but I catch a friggin', I don't even know what this is, a slug kind of thing? What the hell? Come on, dude. Really? Really? Oh, man, it's 3.40 right now. I've been out here since nine o'clock. 12, one, two, three, six hours, almost seven hours I've been fishing. Not a bite, man, this place is just kind of dead. I tried my best, I really did. I threw everything I had at it. 
even forge some bait. Sometimes it just doesn't work out in your favor. That's fishing. Yesterday I had to retreat with my tail between my legs, throw in the white flag, go back to the buttermobile and lick my wounds. But today is a new day, got a new spot, same rig, we're 50 feet up. That's why you gotta make sure your line is strong enough to pull these fish straight up the sheer cliff. We're gonna catch some fish today. Can you tell it's windy out here? Three ounce weight, a little bit smaller size squid today. Cast out to the deepest spot I can. Always a good idea to stay at least three or four feet away from the cliff's edge. That's where you can fall, the cliff can crumble, and you can fall to your death straight up. So always be careful. Take safety into account first. No fish right here, I'm gonna cast out again. One cast, look how much spool comes off the line. This is why they call it bait and wait. See that point over there? That's where I was this morning. I traveled over here to this point, and look how deep it is. Look how calm it is. There's no surge, there's no white caps. I've got way more area to fish. Look at all this. And on the south side, there's a whole nother cove too, and it's all protected and deep. So when you come out here with rock fishing, sometimes you gotta try different spots. I mean, I haven't caught any fish yet, but my hopes have never been higher for this trip. Oh yeah, oh yeah, got a fish baby. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Oh, come on, oh, get snagged on a rock right there. I see him, I see it. Come on, baby, get off of there. He's on there right now. I gotta let him swim free. Oh, come on. Let's try from up here. Damn, dude, I thought I had him. It's real so slowly, bro. I should have went faster. No! Oh, come on, man. Ah, oh, gosh. I think I'm gonna have to break it, but I'm just gonna let it have some slack. That was the first bite I've had on this trip. That's a good sign, though. That was within five minutes, so I know this is a good spot. Yeah, man. I think I'm gonna have to break it. God, my first fish. Gotta break it and recast, retie again. Sucks for me and sucks for the fish. All right, let's try that again. I'm gonna avoid that big old rock this time. It's deep there. We're gonna catch a fish this time, baby. Guaranteed. I'm gonna give it five minutes at most. Probably one minute. Well, there's a bite, there's a bite. I think I got him on there. I think he's on there right now. One more little tug. There he is, yeah? I'm about to set the hook on him. I think he's sitting there on the bottom with it in his mouth. Yep, got him, got him. This one's not coming off. Get up here, get to the top of the water. Yeah, baby, come on in here. The other one looked like it was red. This one is also. Now let's make sure we don't fall off the cliff. Bit on the squid. Looks like an undersized uh, cabazon from here. There we go. Look at that beautiful, beautiful color though. Wow, he's bright red. Hooked right in the mouth. He's almost worth the measure right there. Look at that bright, beautiful color. Let me show you guys up close. Look at that color, man. Bright red. And these are super camouflage predators. They'll sit on top of rocks and they'll be the same color as their surroundings. So you know almost certain down there is the same color as this. Wow, and they're, they're meaty too. They got no scales. Look at that lateral line on them. Just a beautiful, beautiful fish right there on the lip too, on the squid. So how I like to hold these guys, I put my two fingers on those fins there, and then I can take the hook out and just hold them like a little ball, like a little football. 
I'm pretty sure he's small, but let's measure him anyway just for fun. They need to be 15 inches. Yeah, he's 13 inches. So I'm gonna let him go. That's two fish in about 10 minutes. See you later, buddy. Fly, oh yeah. Straight nose in the water, swims away easily. Fish are so nice, no scales, no slime. Really nice. I'm hoping to catch another one of those, but a keeper. Yeah, baby, skunks off the board for two days. Now we'll continue. See, once you find a, a spot that's good, that's deep and calm, you can catch fish. Since he bit on the squid, got a whole squid on the bottom, Kitek and the squid on top. I'm going to cast out to a little bit farther water. I got to make sure I don't get too excited and fall off the cliff. Confidence is high now. Ooh, just dropped. Do I feel a bite already? Oh, 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 there's a fish on here, but it's snagged on a rock. Come on, get yourself free, little man. That's the trade-off. When you cast farther, there's probably more fish, but there's more likely to get snagged too. Come on out of there. Oh, I got it free, but I lost the fish. Dang, lost the fish though. Ha! The bite is on right now. Getting bites every cast. Sometimes it's just like that. Sometimes you'll have no bites all day, literally all day. I was out there seven hours yesterday. No bites. And today, five bites in 15 minutes. Another tip that I like to do when the swell and the surge is going past, let your line go with it. That way your, your weight doesn't drag. You just go with the, the waves. And then when it goes back, go with it too. Sometimes you gotta go up, sometimes you gotta go down. Sometimes you even gotta open your bail a little bit and let a little line out just to keep that weight in one location. Oh, there's a, there's a bite, there's a bite. Oh yeah! Oh, that's a good one. Oh, seal's trying to come get my, my fish. Oh, damn, that seal right there. This little bait stealer right there. Looking for my fish. There's a fish. There's a bite. Just nibble. Man, he's not committing to it. He's just nibbling at it. I don't want to set the hook when it's just like a bite, bite. If you watched my video from a long time, you don't want to set the hook when it's like that. You want to set the hook when it's like, ba 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 ba. You don't want to set it when it's like a nibble, nibble. You got to wait for that, ba 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 ba. Then you know he's on the hook swimming around. And you know these, these pieces of squid are really tough, so a nibble like that is not going to get the bait off the hook. I almost guarantee there's still bait on both hooks. See, like both baits are still on. Just nibbled the heck out of. No matter how you hook it, whether it's one time, two times, three times, four times, always make sure that hook tip is exposed. There he is. Yeah, baby. Oh, he's a fighter. Oh, yeah. Oh, if I can get him out of this rock, this is a good fish right here. Oh, come on. Come on, baby. He's got some serious pull on him. Oh, come on, man. This is the keeper I was looking for. Oh, come on. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, God. There's a big fish on here. Not again. Look at that. He's trying to swim away. Look at that. Oh, God. Oh, got him free. Got him free. Hell yeah. Where you at, baby? Where are you? Come on over here. I gotta keep him on this side because there's so many rocks over here. Oh, it's not, not nothing too crazy. Ugh. This one looks a little bit bigger. 
he got himself free. That's pretty close. That's pretty close. I got to measure this one. Look at that. Right on the zero. 15 and a half. Almost 16. Well, I'm going to keep this fish, so I'm going to hit him on the head, and then I can take the hook out. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Right between the eyes. So that's the problem with bait fishing. A lot of the times they'll swallow the hook. And I'm really glad this is a keeper because if it wasn't and it was bleeding and gut hook like this, we would still have to throw it back. Just barely a keeper, but that's enough meat for a meal for me. Actually, if we cut right here, we can probably get to his heart. So check this out, right where his throat would be. You can cut right there, you'll probably cut right in front of his heart. You can still see it beating. Man, this fish saved the trip for me. And just for that, you already know what's gonna happen. Habers on beating heart. Thank you, buddy. You're gonna be my next meal. I'm gonna eat this fish whole, so I'm gonna gut it right now so I can prep it for the fire. So I detached the gills from his mouth. Now it should all be able to pull right out. All the guts should come right out, just like that. Sure there's some crabs that would want that. I'm gonna take off this collar part and we'll cook this separately. A good bunch of meat on there. So that'll cook up nice in the fire. Just to get rid of any bloody flavor when we eat it, you can take off this bloodline. And there we go, well, that fish is ready to eat. No scales, so I'm gonna just score the skin so it doesn't curl up and I'm gonna cook it whole. So in, in almost every kind of fish, there's also this thin layer of translucent skin on the belly lining. I think probably to protect the meat from the stomach acid of the fish. And anyway, if you could take that off, it'll also help stop the curling of the meat. So I lit up a bag of coals here, just gonna let that heat up. Meanwhile, I'm gonna score the fish about three times on each side. Skin doesn't curl and it'll be able to cook a little bit more evenly. Just lay that on the side for now, temporarily. So all I have is some salt and some olive oil. I'm gonna let whatever fat is in the skin bring out some extra flavor. And that's all that I'm going to use for seasoning. And I'm going to throw the whole fish on the grill. Spread some salt all over the skin on the outside. By the time this charcoal is ready to cook, the salt will actually absorb into the meat a little bit and make the entire fish have a salty flavor, not just on the outside. So since I'm going to cook the fish directly on the fire, I don't want to put it straight on the ash, straight on the charcoal and get ash all over the fish's meat. So I collected a bunch of rocks. I'm going to throw these on top of the coals and this will keep the heat source directly away from the meat and the skin and it'll stop it from burning and it also will help keep it clean. Now the best thing I could do is get a flat rock but I don't have any of those around here so the best thing I could do is scavenge a bunch of small ones. Something to remember though, if you're going to do something like this, we're right by the ocean so sometimes Rocks like this that have a little pocket inside that might have moisture trapped in it, if you put a flame over it, it'll start steaming, it'll start boiling, and it could cause a little explosion. So you gotta watch out for little rock explosives. So I'm gonna put this all on here, put the fish on there, put some butter on both sides, and then step away so I don't get bombed. I'm gonna cover my face too, just in case something crazy happens. All right, I'm gonna say that's ready to cook on. A little bit of butter, baby. A little bit more right here. How's that look? Oh yeah. All right, straight on the rocks here. Just like that. I'm gonna do the same thing with the collar. Just a little bit of butter right there in the middle. And put that ah, right next to it. Mmm, this is looking good. It smells good already. Take a look at these pieces. These are right from the sides, right by the belly. And these are done. The fish probably has another five, five minutes or so, five or six minutes. Oh my God. The skin for sure gives it extra flavor. The meat is so delicate. It definitely has a barbecue flavor, but there's no ashes on it because of the rocks that I put there. Can you see the fat from the skin? Definitely adds a nice depth to it. The secret is really salting it and letting it sit for about 10 to 20 minutes. Then the entire fish has flavor. 
That's delicious. Holy moly. I think the collar is just about done. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Oh, yeah. Yep, that's done. Ooh, it's kind of like eating a crab. You know, the inside of a crab, you can break it open and there's these joints. Look at that meat right there, man. You know, I'm gonna eat this entire thing just like this. You see what I mean? It has these kind of notches like a crab. You can just get all that meat right out. Wow, and I bet these taste just like chips. Yep, super crunchy, delicious, man. I don't think I can wait. I can't wait. I just took the tail off because I know that's thinner and that's done for sure. Oh, this is done. You can eat that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, you know it's really good when I can't help but pick it off while it's still cooking. Look at the meat and the skin all in one. Perfectly cooked. I don't think you could add anything to this to make it better. It's amazing how it is right now. I just can't help myself. It's going to be done soon. Couldn't wait for the whole fish to be finished cooking.